Well, as, as, a, as a believing agnostic, um, I mean, I have perfect faith that there's God, uh, and, and, but I'm, I'm unclear about how to define God. But my agnosticism allows me to say, certainly what, like Maimonides you know, t- teaches us, what God isn't. I mean, humans created the Internet. So what's interesting about that statement is it kind of, it's an agnostic's construct. Humans create the construct of the divine, and we worship within that system. For me, the Internet is a human creation, and it's amazing. If anything, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of massive artificial brain that we've... I could go that far, but it, God, no. Just, it just doesn't, you know, it's a nice kind of flirtatious idea, but I don't know. Um, last year, uh, at the Center for Jewish History, you were part of a, um, what they, what the Center for Jewish History titled, A Legacy for the Future, Celebrating the Life and Teachings of Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel. Right. Um, it got me wondering um, what uh, Rabbi Heschel would have to say about the Internet if he were alive today, how he might use it how he might want it to evolve hmm. since you know something about his writings and his philosophy yeah boy it's a good, it's a good question I, you know my guess is that Heschel would say you know as an effort to engage Jews you know use the the tools that you have to get them connected to the divine and to get them connected to redeeming the world you know tikkun olam for sure i think he would say that at the same time that being the fierce intellectual that he was and the deeply uh, spiritual person that he was, he probably would warn against spending too much time with the medium. At, and he would probably say, you know, you should be spending your time reflecting and reading um, and, and not moving yourself too much into the realm of the machine. I mean, his great metaphor that he employs in the Sabbath is all about not submitting to the idol of the of of industrialization and um, that the Shabbat is a chance to worship the one God in distinction from the idolatrous ways of basically of the capitalist system and 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 modern industrialization so he would on the other hand he'd see the value of the computers ability to reach people at the same time that I think he issued a pretty stern warning about not putting too much stock in its value. That for someone who never met Heschel and never spoke to him, that's a, to mix the metaphors yet again, a ham-fisted way of trying to <laughs> say what he would do. Uh, because <laughs> he wouldn't eat ham either, but anyways. It's a bad joke. Uh, you mentioned that at, at some point during your day, your day you just have to um, relax, yes. as, as you said. Yeah. Um, but I still wonder um, how or does technology make you a better rabbi? That's a good question. I, I, you know, my gut would be to say yes. Um, as any convenience helps you be in greater contact. I, I arranged this week, I did two hospital visits this week, and I found out, by, I found out about both of them and arranged both of them through the instantaneous interaction of email on the run you know and was able to just manipulate calendar phone calls locations and set it all up um, in one particular visit there was a timeliness I think getting to a hospital room as soon as I could was really helpful for the conversation that ended up occurring you know what I mean so it was helpful it's impossible to say you know I have a grandmother who is a very religious person and um, you know she was a Christian and her minister uh, used to visit her every Friday and he would come by her house. This was before internet, before cell phones, but as growing up as a kid I'd always hear about him. He came over and, and uh, it was really influential on, on, on you know, my thinking about what kind of person you should be as a, if you're going to you know, serve other people. Now, those are all things that were set up, you know, just with a landline, I guess, or him walking over and ringing an old lady's doorbell and going on in. So, 
you know, would I still be effective without all these conveniences? Yeah, you would just work with what you have. You know, if it's paper and pencil, that's the tool. You know, apropos of our earlier discussion about Neil Postman, I mean, the, the exciting thing about reading him for me personally as a rabbi is he reminds me of the fact that any of these things are just tools. You know, the printing press is a tool that revolutionized our understanding of civilization. The telegraph, a tool that under, you know, revolutionized our understanding. George Mossy, who's my teacher in Madison, big influence on my becoming a rabbi, is a European cultural historian. I remember sitting in one of his classes in Madison. I feel like I might have told you this story, but I don't know. I remember sitting in one of his classes in Madison, and he said, <laughs> he had this great hyperbolic ways of putting things. He said, uh, the, the train and the telegraph in the late 19th, early 20th century in Europe literally drove people crazy. <laughs> Suddenly you could get someplace that much faster. People didn't know what to do with themselves. And you know, it was like, you know, and you're sitting there in the 1980s and you're taking notes and you're like, really? You know, a train and the telegraph were that big of a deal? But you know, you're reminded in Postman, in one of his last, you know, one of his last works, he talks about that, about how the telegraph really revolutionized everything. So the same thing here. And there's going to be something else, you know, that we're going to be facing technologically. And yet, as he, Postman, I'm saying, you know, hyperbolically, like a rabbi, you know, like a prophet, really, you know, hammers away at the fact that it still doesn't really solve anything. You know, we have 49 million people in this country without health care. You know, has all of this stuff really helped us connect people to health care? No. What's gotten in the way? Basic human greed, you know, which we've been struggling with since we've been in caves. So that's also really important to remember We're from a religious perspective. Back to the cave with those, <laughs> with those icons. Yeah, good point. Um, speaking of technology that uh, has helped you recently, uh, you were part of a conference call with, uh, what is it, 900 rabbis yeah, on September Yeah, 899 7th. of my closest friends, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and you, uh, this is a, a Obama's conference call with right. all of these rabbis. Correct. Um, you use technology to do that. Absolutely. I was, I was, well, they, the campaign used technology to be able to connect people seamlessly. And I mean, 900 people on a phone call, if you think of it, everyone calling in from all over the place, that's amazing in and of itself, right? You know, remember party lines? I mean, you know, that would have been interesting since none of us, there were only four people who were allowed to speak on the call who could speak on the call. You know, so technologically, the ability to set all that up was really cool. Simultaneously, um, I, I blogged about it for my blog, so I was taking notes, and I wanted to kind of live blog it or whatever. Every debate I watched, Josh Micah Marshall, I'd read Talking Points Memo, and he did the live blogging during the debates, which were hilarious. I don't know if you were reading those. Really, really funny. Um, but anyhow, <coughs> excuse me. And then the other thing was also for Jew School. Um, they had asked me to post something, so I, I put it up there as well. And I saw someone like at Simcha Torah, some person who was here at Simcha Torah, and they're like, oh, I read your thing on Jew school, that was really great, sent it around to a bunch of my relatives who were kind of on the fence about Obama. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's great. And, our, and one could argue, you know, when historians look back on this election, apropos of him, of Obama, there's no question that early on, I mean, he had such an advantage. He had an advantage over Hillary, and he, had an, he has a huge advantage over McCain. I mean, the way that campaign's website, text messaging, it's unbelievable how they're, you know, capable of connecting to people, um, which is really powerful. And I think that's been part of his success, you know, which is what, you know, leads me to believe, that, you know, to have no doubt that he'll win, because I just think he's connected to people in ways that, that traditional modes of understanding campaigns can't even begin to figure out. Though Matt Bai, right, wrote about it and, and you know, tried to, tried to predict this would be happening. And Obama's probably the first, the first, you know, internet president, so. Uh, would you share some websites you visit that feed your soul? Feed my soul. I'll be totally honest with you. I don't, I don't look at any religious websites. Um, I don't. I, I, you know, what feeds my soul is, you know, Judaism and prayer and poetry and my family and friendship and, and working inside this community. I mean, those are the things that feed my soul. Well, I want to thank you again for uh, sitting down You're very and welcome. Uh, chatting. Pleasure. That was fun. <laughs>